This best mark, follow me. Start with the chucks in your right hand. You're gonna hold right in the middle of the chuck so that the string or the chain in this case is coming out of your thumb. You're gonna drop it down and bring it up. You're gonna warm up with this basic striking motion. When you bring it down, open your hand like this. The thumb's just off a little bit. This acts as a break. What that means is when you come down, if you don't open your hand, it just smacks you right there. So you're gonna start to open the hand, bring it back and down. It's just a warm up move. You're incorporating this basic strike. If this were for street fight self-defense, you'd pull this here and just hit them hard and fast. Now, these are metal chucks and these hurt when you get hit by them. I know. And they're very effective as a self-defense, street fight self-defense weapon. But you wanna learn how to use them basically two ways. You wanna learn how to use them for the art, the esoteric stuff, all the spins and the cool things that you can do with your hands. And then the Bruce Lee stuff that they do in the movies. But mostly, if you're gonna learn martial arts, learn martial arts for self-defense, street fight self-defense. This is an effective weapon. After you've warmed up the hand and the arm and the shoulder, with this basic strike, bring it to your shoulder and come to the hip. Now, think of striking from here to here, coming through for self-defense, just back and down. One, two, it's very simple. Go back to the down and up, go down and up, and then add this one. Now you're doing two strikes in succession, one after the next. And then the last one I want you to do, comes across the front, just a horizontal strike, just like this, just across. I don't know if any of you have seen that Ip Man 4 movie. Have you seen it? And uh, Ip Man 4, the actor who's playing Bruce Lee fights the actor at the end. It's not Scott Adkins, it's the other guy, the big karate guy. The guy comes out, he's swinging his nunchucks, and he's doing whatever, and he, he goes to hit Bruce, and Bruce, the actor playing Bruce Lee stops it and takes it out of his hand. He grabs it, kicks him back or something, knocks him back, grabs his chucks. And then Bruce starts doing one of these. If you ever watch a Bruce Lee movie, this is very common. Now you know how to do it. If you hadn't known how to do it before, right? It's just across, over, and back. One, two. Now put it in the other hand. We're gonna learn how to go from hand to hand here in a second. But just do that basic up and down up and down, warming up. Remember, when you bring it down, your hand just comes open like that, from here to here. That acts as a break. That means that all of this energy, the kinetic energy flowing through, this speeding Chuck, this part, I always called this Chuck the Truck and Chuck Norris. Grab Chuck the Truck, when you open it, it's not gonna bash your fingers as much when you open it because then that energy that's here now goes into your hand. You just shifted it. And that protects your fingers. If you don't do that, when you bring it down, it's going to likely just smash your knuckles. But that's okay. It's not going to kill you. Just learn how to do it right from the start. From here, go into that second strike. This is just my left hand. You should be in your left hand already. Remember to hold it right in the middle. Now, this is all about leverage. If I hold it here, I've got the most leverage. That means I'm going to hit you as hard as I can, street fight self-defense, when I'm holding here. If I hold it here, I have the most speed. So knowing what, what, like what's your purpose? Are you fighting? Is it self-defense? Are you doing a demonstration? Are you showing off and doing some cool tricks or whatever? Or is it all about that rapid speed? You wanna look cool? And that, that determines where you're gonna hold it, right? And your hand, once you get used to this, your hand's gonna slide up and down, up and down as you're using it. All right, so you have this one. Now add this one, horizontal. Bring it back here. You got one, two, three, two, three. When you bring it back, I'm just letting it roll right there onto the shoulder. The key is put this tip on your skin, on your body, as you bring it back and it's going to wrap. And then it's not gonna bash you as much. If you do it like this and you stop so that this is here, that's gonna bust you right in the back every single time. See that? You bring it in, 
It's not going to hurt as much. So that's the key. One, two, three. One, two, three. Bruce Lee, faster and faster. The key to all those movies, you want to get really good at this stuff, is get really close to the camera. Get those. When you're close to the camera, everything moves a lot faster. It's a trick, right? But I want you to learn how to do it right. So from here, one, two, three. We're back into the other hand, and now I want you to learn how to spin it. Start with your hand in the middle, thumb side has that string. I'm somewhere in the middle. Again, if you're closer here, you got more speed. If you're closer here, you've got more leverage. It means you're gonna hit much harder for self-defense or somewhere in the middle because we're just warming up. Spinning forward, making this cranking motion, churning, just like that. Palm facing the sky. Now turn your palm to the ground Make sure your face is out of the way. You do that by extending the arm away from your face. The closer it is, I'm not gonna show you, <laughs> this is gonna hurt. The closer you are, and the closer that is to your face. So you control whether or not you're gonna get smashed right in your teeth. Oh, by the way, I just learned this really new thing. If you're a parent of small kids, and they're gonna lose, lose their teeth, you can save money. Tell them the tooth fairy is gonna take their tooth, turn it into a star. And then they gotta look up in the sky to see the star. Turn your palm up, and then you save money and they get all excited looking at the sky. Palm up, palm down. I thought that was pretty smart, right? Palm up, palm down. And you put it together, palm up and down. And now you have your infinity spin or an endless spin, the figure eight. And you're just carving that sideways figure eight. Down and back. And now you have three ranges of motion. You have the wrist, which is the smallest range, the wrist. Just the wrist turning, that's also the most speed. And when you do that, you're gonna be closer to the tip. That's the, right there. And then the second range is the uh, elbow range, middle, the medium range. And so now, instead of your wrist doing the work, now your elbow is doing the figure eight. And then of course, that leverage, you wanna knock somebody out, street fight self-defense, you've got that big shoulder or the arm length range, the longest range from here. So you have to know all three ranges, not perfectly the first day, but just understand that they're in there. You've got small, and then you've got medium, and you've got the large, the big range. All right, put it in the other one, palm up, straight up. Nice, excellent. My first pair of nunchucks I made, we made them out of uh, tomato steaks. What'd you use? Palm down, those octagonal, octagon, I don't even know how to say it. Octagonal, you know, the sticks, the octagons. Palm up, I don't even know if they still make those. Palm down, I lived in a farming community, a rural community, lots of racehorses actually. Palm up, so there's always, a lot of wood everywhere, a lot of stakes for making fences and stuff. It's the best way to do it. Perfect. Oh, you got some nice stuff. Ash is the greatest wood, especially if you live in an area with a lot of ash trees. You get them while they're saplings. Make yourself a bow. I'm sure that's what you're talking about. Make yourself some nunchucks. This is all I did. I just did, this is how you learn it. If you need to slow it down, you're just, churning forward and then your palm goes down and you continue with that same motion and then your palm goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and down and if you break it down that way at the very beginning not only will you really lubricate the joints keep them safe from injury during the workout but you will train your brain on what's happening and then you'll be able to get there faster Remember your three ranges, you've got the wrist, which is as close as you can get, that's your speed. And then you have the elbow, it's the medium speed, or medium range, and then you have that big, long shoulder range. Put them back in the other hand, and I want you to just to reverse it. I'm pulling it in. What you did before was you were pushing, now you're pulling. So now all you're doing is the reverse, this is called an orbital spin, think about the, um, Satellite orbiting the Earth, or the moon orbiting the Earth, Earth orbiting the sun, going around. It's orbiting the outside. Now it's orbiting the inside because I pushed my palm down. It's still pulling in. When I push my palm down or turn my hand over, it's still pulling in toward me. 
coming this way. I put those two together, out, in, and now I have my reverse figure eight. And these are all deflecting strikes, right? Knocking something out of his hand. For street fight self-defense, they've got a knife. It's a very effective self-defense weapon. Thank you, I really appreciate that. I'm only, I get better with all your comments, so keep leaving me comments, especially in the comment section, because I don't always get to see them during the chat. All right, so I've got this reverse, put in the other hand, same thing, do that uh, circular motion, pulling in toward you. Remember, you control whether or not you're getting hit in the face, your hands are too close to your body, you're gonna hit yourself, push your arms out, just extend it, palm up, palm down, up and down, here's your reverse figure eight. Now let's go back to street fight self-defense, Bruce Lee style, I'm gonna start on my shoulder, I'm gonna strike, come back and I'm up. We did that to start, that was our warm up. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I want you to do two orbitals. One, two, and I want you to pop it under your armpit. All I'm doing is I'm doing the orbital outside toward you, one, two, and then I turn my hand in like I'm doing the figure eight, but instead of doing another spin, I just bring my hand from here, I, bring, I just bring it back. And when it comes in, I'm pinching. You're just gonna pinch with your arm close to your body. That's gonna create tension. This is one of my favorite moves in all of the movies. Self-defense, this is a great self-defense move. You create all this tension and then you pull against it and you release it. And that goes smacking right into his face. Notice that I turn my hand not straight, because if I go straight from here, it's gonna come back and hit me, but I go at the angle. From here, bam, right out there. It's very quick, so you have one, two, catch it. Tension, that's just squeeze your arm down, pop them, go back. One, two, catch, pop them. One, two, catch, pop, and then you can put it in the other hand, try that. Two orbital spins, catch it, oh, missed it. Two orbitals, catch it. And again, all I'm doing from here, one, two, is I turn that hand in and I pull it back. And when it continues to swing up, I just pinch it in that stinky armpit. And I turn that angle, bam, right in the face. From here, one, two, catch, tension, squeezing, pop. Back to the other hand, spin, spin, catch, pop. Then put them together. This is where you start to look like Bruce Lee. But you know what? All these guys in the movies, they're doing really basic things really well. I've been watching Scott Adkins. Um, is he British? I, I, I've never seen, I only see these things with the sound off, but I heard him talking once. And I thought, oh, he's got an accent. I think he's British or maybe Australian. You guys might know better than I do. Anyway, it's Scott Adkins. He's, he's in great shape. He looks like a Taekwondo fighter, Taekwondo guy. And he's teaching really good techniques, solid roundhouse kicks, solid back kicks. I've seen him in the movies. All he ever does, just like all the others, Michael Jai White, um, the only ones who are super complex, think of uh, the Wushu guys, the Jet Lees, and the um, oh, Jackie Chan, he just had a birthday. Jackie Chan, those guys are doing acrobatics and flips and spins and all kinds of really cool stuff. The rest of them, it's all very simple, clean basics. You learn how to do the basics really well, you're gonna look just like your favorite martial arts movie actor, if you also add the intensity in your face, you gotta look like you're fighting like you mean it. And it's more fun that way too. You can't be bored if you're not acting in a boring way. So when you do this practice, once you get it, one, two, catch it, pop them, add that one, two, three, spin, spin, catch, bam. Practice that for a while. One, two, three, spin, spin, catch, bam. It's all real basic stuff, but you start doing it faster and you do it with intensity and you get the face going, one, two, three, boom, bam. You start to look like Bruce Lee. Uh, yeah, we'll do martial arts with the legs. That's, that's my um, bread and butter, that's what I do mostly. It's just, it works well here, I can see what you're saying. If I do the legs, I can't show you as much. But we will, we'll do a lot of kicking workouts. I love kicking workouts. Kicking is my thing. I've knocked so many people out with good kicks. You will too, for self-defense or for competition. All right. Back to the other hand, do that um, strike. One, two, three, spin, spin, catch, and then add that strike. This, this is practice, 
two, three, pop them. Now I want you to learn how to go from one hand to the other hand. Yes, we will kick the bags, the legs on another video, I promise you for sure. This week, probably tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do a bag kicking workout. Um, we'll kick the bags, we'll kick to the floor. I'm in Florida now, right now I'm in Florida. This hand, I'm gonna show you how to do the easy spin or the easy transfer first. How to get it with one hand to the other hand. Put the arm out here, bring it here. When you bring it here, you're just gonna turn your wrist down from here to here. That's gonna have it hanging right under your armpit. And when your stick, remember I said Chuck the truck, Chuck Norris, when Chuck the truck is facing the sky, perpendicular like a tree growing up, you take the other hand and you reach across and grab Chuck Norris, get him good. Let Chuck the truck go. Bring it back to the other side. Your elbow is out. The other hand comes through to the front. A lot of times, you'll try to reach behind because of the way your brain works. But always remember, front of the body to here. If you bring it here, wherever you point this stick, that's where this stick's gonna go. So you don't wanna bash your head in, you will, uh, maybe not in, but you don't wanna hit your head really hard or hit your ear or pop your eye or hit your nose or chip your tooth. Watch where you point this thing. Because wherever you point this thing, that's where this one has to go, it has to go. So if I go straight up in the air, it has to go straight to the ground. I'm safe. If I point it even a little bit like this at an angle, you're gonna right across the back, your back. You're gonna do that. Probably hit your, um, if they're hard enough, you'll hit your, uh, what is that, the, the, the arm, the backbone there. Can't, I don't know why I can't think of it. Your, um, whatever, you know what I mean, it's good, the part that hurts. You're gonna hit it like that. If you turn it enough, because and this is how your brain works, your brain, your eyes are still trying to see it. You're trying to see it. And when you see it, you're, you start looking at it, you start pointing it at yourself, and that's when, bam, you bash yourself right in the face. And, and, and you did it, it's your fault, you did it. You didn't know better, but you did it yourself. You pointed that at your face, you tried to look at it at the same time, and you freaked out because it was coming so fast. Get rid of that. To control that, uh, what, that outcome, point that either at the sky or at the ground, at the earth, either to the heavens or to the, the, you know, the center of the earth. Straight up and down. When you point it like that, it's going to come straight under your arm. Then all you have to do is take that other hand and put it across, just like that. From here, it goes right in your hand. Here. This is the one Bruce Lee does in all the movies because it's the easiest. He fights uh, Dan and Asanto. Some of you guys know Dan in his He's in his 80s. Moves better than I do. He's a Jeet Kune Do guy. Supposedly Bruce Lee's original student. But the truth is, if you watch any of those movies, you'll see Dan Inosanto already knew a whole bunch of stuff. A lot more, maybe, than Bruce Lee. But whatever, right? In philosophy. He was his student in philosophy, I'm sure. But he knew, Dan Inosanto knew how to do this one, which is the opposite, where you go across and then you come up. He also knew how to stick his hand here and bring the other one around. Remember I said, wherever you point that, that's where the other one goes. So if you don't want to hit yourself in the face, just know where it's going to go. You can learn all these things. But start with this one to here. One, two, one, and speed it up. Add that intensity, enthusiasm. Get excited about your training. Go faster. Smash your fingertips. Get it moving. Move forward and backward. And then start from the beginning. One, two, three, spin, spin, catch, pop them. Go to the other side. One, two, one, two, three, spin, spin, catch, pop, and then hand transfer. And then build all kinds of skills. There's a lot of things you can do with these, but those are the basics. I always start with what Bruce Lee did in the movies because we've all seen them, right? And maybe you didn't see the original Bruce Lee, but you've seen the new ones where they make movies about Bruce Lee. And then Ip Man 4, the new one, he's fighting against that guy, he takes away. The nunchucks. Oh, let me show you that one before we go. This, I just want to show you this. Put tension on your hands and then you bring it to your shoulder from here. So start here, tension, that means pull the hands apart and then turn it to where you were when you caught it. Start here, tension, and then turn it to here. 
One, two. This is a good exercise to build some strength in your hands and get a good feel for your chucks. When you're doing this back and forth, you can then slow it down, come out here with intense face like you're about to hurt somebody. So you're doing this one, two, three, spin, spin, catch, pop them. And you're going hand to hand, two, three, and then you gotta fight the guy so you stop here and then you turn, but it's a tension. You're just pulling your hands apart, bam, straight out. A lot of things you can do with that. Just pushing, but practice that. And that'll help you learn how to, how to not look at the sticks, but get them around your body from here to here. And I, want, I wasn't gonna do this in this video, but I love these so much. I do wanna show you the wrist roll. So go into your figure eight. When you're on the opposite side of the body. Yeah, I know, but there's a reason I don't use Instagram and it's a silly reason. I'll tell you guys later. Uh, I have like six Instagrams too for the different businesses I run. All right, so you're going forward and back, forward, back, forward, back when you're over here. Turn it to the back of your hand. When you turn it to the back of your hand, open your hand. Turn your hand under to catch it. And now you're in what's called a negative grip. Now in this negative grip, these, this is also fighting, also striking. You go back into the forward figure eight, infinity spin, endless spin. When you get over here to the same side, right hand, right side, you bring it over again, the back of your hand, open your hand and turn it. Now there are different length chains or string. These are short. These are called speed chucks. This is, I think this is the XMA brand from years and years ago. Extreme martial arts, uh, Mike Chat. He was a, a big time competitor in a lot of the um, tournaments from years ago. Got an amazing school, does a lot of stunt work now. I think maybe he's been in the, uh, I think he's the Red Power Ranger maybe. I think, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he was. All right, so these are the nunchucks he designed for speed. The other kind have a longer string and they're called dinosaur chucks just because they're the old style and they move differently. Not wrong, these aren't better, those aren't better, they're just different. I have both. I've got the dinosaur chucks and I've got the speed chucks, I've got chain, I've got string, I've got cord, and I have uh, metal wire and all different materials and they all move differently. That's why I like it so much because they're all different, they challenge you. But when you do the wrist rolls, they're pretty much the same, but you're gonna have to adjust where you're holding it. If you have the dinosaur chucks, likely you're gonna be closer to the string for that turn and when you turn back. If, uh, or depending on the size of your hand too, I've got really wide hands from all that punching. Wide hands from, from punching and push-ups. That's my theory, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But you might have to hold down a little bit but you'll get a feel, and like I said before, your hands are gonna slide in different positions, and you're gonna get a feel for that. It's gonna take a while, but if you keep going, you don't quit, keep moving in that direction, you're going to get better and better. I'm trying to slow it down without dropping them. And if you do drop them, pick them up. You'll only ever have trouble if you don't pick them up. If you pick them up, you'll always win. Just drop them, pick them up. You're looking at the camera, pick them up with your foot. I don't wear shoes when I work out. That's not why, but it's a benefit. You should wear the tabby boots like a ninja. By the way, if you could be a ninja or a samurai, which would you be, a ninja or a samurai? Put your uh, uh, answer below. This is an informal poll. I wanna know, do you like the samurai better or the ninja better? And you can use, like, you can do, uh, think about, like, modern ninjas, Ninjago, or um, what are the guys, the turtles, the ninja turtles, or you can think of, like, old school, like, what the myth is supposed to be, where they, you know, sneak around and stab people in the dark to steal their stuff. And then samurai, Ronin, a masterless samurai, or you work for some lord, and you're some, yeah, me too. I was going to say it until the end, but... 
I've never been a, a ninja fan. This is probably because I, I knew an American ninja and nothing against him, but he was, uh, he just didn't strike. It wasn't something I wanted to emulate. But you know, those old uh, Kurosawa movies with the samurai and the pride and the shoulders back and you know, the chin back and stomach up and in and they're walking around, they master every technique. I like that better. Yeah, ninjas are often misunderstood. And there are, there's a lot of different theories and philosophies there. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Grab yourself a pair of nunchucks or make them. That's even better. If you need to buy some, you can buy. I put a link to, I think, the foam ones you can get. I'll just tell you right now, those things break very easily, but they're inexpensive. So they're better than nothing. But um, no, I've had, uh, I've had mine that are the octagons. The first ones I ever had for years and years were um, tomato steaks. And these tomato steaks, you used to pound them in the ground so the tomato plant could grow up. And then, there you go. I like that answer. It's, uh, Ninja at night, samurai by day. Um, it's an, it's shaped like an octagon. And it's just a hard wood steak. And you cut those, we cut those. You drill a hole in each side. You fish your string through two or three times, pull it tight, tie your little knot, and then you have a pair. But they don't have to be round. They can be any shape. There's no way to do it wrong as long as you get to start with a pair. A broomstick cut down, if you get a wooden one, a lot of them are made out of metal or plastic, cut down, you can do the exact same thing. Wood is great. Metal is, uh, I don't think it hits any harder. Like the really hard wooden nunchucks I have that are heavy, the old dinosaur kind, they hurt a thousand times worse than this thing. And I even have the new, um, the combative.com, the aluminum ones, those are sharp and they kind of cut the hands a little bit but I still would rather be hit by those than be hit by some of those old style, the big heavy wooden nunchucks. So it doesn't really matter. It's all personal preference. Once you get going, get a whole variety. And once you get past the foam, you'll never go back. I try to teach the kids with the foam. I don't like it just because, and you can get them if that's all you've got. I put a link in the thing below. But if you don't wanna, if you wanna skip over foam, I would, because when you hit yourself with metal or with wood, you learn faster. When you make mistakes with these, you learn faster. And it uh, takes getting out of your comfort zone. You gotta push yourself to grow with these. Where the other ones, and they're, they're, not, they're just not heavy enough. They're not heavy enough to really give you the feel that you need and to get them moving fast enough. But mostly, I, I use the other ones because kids pay attention more, like more intensely. When you start doing this with wood or metal, even if it's the little kitty, they're, they're made out of uh, red oak, from Century, I think they used to carry them. I don't know who has them, but the smaller ones. Those things, when they, they don't hurt much, but when the kids hit themselves, or when they use them, they pay attention more. And you'll pay attention more when you have more at stake. Don't be afraid, it's like riding a bike. You take off the training wheels. You don't need to, you know, you, you can use them at the beginning, but riding a bike without training wheels is not the same as riding with training wheels. Riding with training wheels is, also, is almost a mistake because you're learning two different skill sets. You just take the training wheels off and you fall. You're supposed to get some bruises, some cuts. You're supposed to uh, hit your head a little bit, wear a helmet. You're supposed to uh, be afraid. You're supposed to go too fast and lose control. That's what you're supposed to do in life. Don't try to take all of the danger out of life. Don't take all of the risk out of life. Zero risk, zero reward. That's the truth. If you just go with all the foam weapons and you move slowly and you're training and you, you go to 10 push-ups, but you don't want to go to 12 because you're afraid you're going to hurt yourself. I don't want you to get injured, but allow yourself to ache, to be sore, to have pain, to stink because you worked out too much. Hello. But don't, uh, don't try to de-risk everything in life. You'll never grow. You won't grow the mental toughness that you need for self-defense for real or for fighting. And a lot of guys now, this is what I see on Instagram, is that you got all these guys who are super buff in... Um, and they think that's they think that's toughness, and they're not. And I meet those guys, not all of them, but you meet a lot of those guys. Where they have those big giant beards, and they and they have tattoos everywhere. That's all a um, for for some of them, not all of them, but for a lot of them, that's a uh, culturally. It's become a uh, it's a farce. It's a, a beard, literally. It's a way to hide behind the the appearance of toughness. And then they're all gentle and soft. And if you say boo then they crumble. And I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying that when you do this training, let it hurt a little bit, right? Hit your head a little bit. And then you 
Um, yes, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. But allow, allow yourself to grow from struggle, from pain, from ach achiness, from tiredness, every single age. There's no age where that's inappropriate. And when you're younger, the great thing is you heal so much faster. The soreness goes away faster. When you get older, it doesn't. But that doesn't mean stop doing it. That doesn't, because what's your alternative? You're going to die taking a poo because you eat crap and you watch, binge, watch Netflix and you get to be like this? That happens to people, right? We know that happens to people. And again, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying that if you have a choice, get your aches and pains from doing push-ups. I was thinking of this today. I was going to say, let's do a 21-day uh, challenge. I don't like the 21-day. I like the 21-push-up challenge. So 21. And what you do is you do, thank you, do seven regular push-ups, put your feet up, do seven push-ups, and then do f seven push-ups on the thing. Yeah, get it. Yeah, exactly. If we don't, if we don't uh, challenge the body, if there's no, there's no reason for the body to adapt, right? There's no growth. And I firmly believe this. You're either growing or you're dying. If you start to stop because of fear of failure, that's the big, biggest one, fear of failure. And that's this generation. That's, we've done this to you. We being old people like me have messed up two or three generations after us by telling everybody they're so wonderful and perfect and giving everybody a trophy and you can't lose. And tell us how it makes you feel, sweetheart. And friends, we're all friends here. Well, that's not always true. But I can still be respectful and kind. I can be polite and honest, but I don't, and I'd not be a jerk, right? But that doesn't mean that I like you, and you don't have to like me. And people come on here every once in a while, and you see them, and they're everywhere through the internet now, where they're just uh, throwing crap at people, making fun of other people, you know, hiding behind their screen or their little computer, saying nasty things about other people. That's become so common. And people think that's the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to criticize. No, you're not. You're supposed to get up and try it yourself. And then, if it's not for you, go do something else. But people do it and then they throw stuff at me and I think it's fun. Um, yeah, reach out to me, send me an email, pasquinelli at hotmail.com and I will send you a, um, a link where you can get them and if you can't get them, we'll figure out where, you're, uh, wh wh where you live. Some states restrict them, some countries won't let you have them at all. Um, but if you're in one of the areas where you can get them, I'll find a link for you. I know how to find them because people ask me that all the time from around the world. Where can you get different uh, equipment? Um, yeah. Good. And, and you, you know what the, the other half of that is? Is that when you are really good at something, you really love it. And when you're really not good at something, you don't naturally love it. So if you really want to, it's like your family. You have to invest time being there. Whether it's the family that you know below you, your children, whatever, or above you, it, it, whether, if it's your church or if it's your business, you're not going to love something or really like something or really respect something if you don't invest yourself in it fully, completely. Whether you want to be there or not, it's like um, breakfast. I make breakfast. I make the eggs. I make the uh, oatmeal and then the whole grain toast and whatever, whatever. And my kids say, "Dad, I don't like this. I don't like that." And I always say the same thing: You don't have to like it to eat it. Number one. Number two, my choice. They make their decision on other things, but my choice what you eat. And number three, I didn't ask you, did you want to eat it? I said, it's breakfast time, come sit down at the table. That's your breakfast. Now, you know, and I mean, I'm not trying to be hard or mean or anything, but we have to teach ourselves and others, you don't have to like it to do it, right? You don't have to like to eat healthy to eat healthy. You don't always, you know, and you're not going to always enjoy all the stuff that you eat. But if you only eat the stuff you enjoy, pizza, burgers, soda, uh, alcohol, cigarettes, whatever, you keep consuming that stuff, you turn into this, your heart stops working and you're dead. Or you, I mean, that's the truth, right? Yes, but I mean, if, if you don't, sometimes you exercise some discipline and self-control, then your whole life just falls apart. And that's what martial arts is. Martial arts is exercising daily habits of discipline. It's like make your bed every day, brush your teeth in the morning, brush your teeth at night after you eat if you can, um, you know, get your homework done, all those basic, simple things that you learned growing up, those basic disciplines are what create a foundation for you to go and do and explore and see and, and experience things. When people don't have the daily disciplines and they don't do them, that's when they, they fall and they get in ruts and they get depressed and they get, and, and we know that's true. And I mean, that's a simple oversimplification, but the bottom line is with a pair of nunchucks, as hard as you can, and you don't have to go for the super hard ones, 
but start with the stuff that's not flashy and then go into the stuff that doesn't look cool. And then when you start to do the things that are a little bit harder and you bash your elbow right on the funny bone or you get yourself right here on the back on the a shoulder blade, that's what I was thinking of earlier. You bust your shoulder blade really hard or you smack the back of your head. And I did this last week with the staff, so my head's still a little sore. Uh, you smack yourself in the back of the head, keep going and expect that that's gonna happen. Expect to pay the price to be able to do the thing. And this is the price, blood, sweat, and tears. Not death, not injury. You don't have to go to the hospital and get things sewn back on or resuscitated. But if you walk around and your elbow hurts for three days because you really whacked it really hard after it heals, you're not gonna do it as much anymore. You're gonna be so much faster, you're gonna be so much better. But get, so reap the reward too. Pay the price and then come back and reap the reward. I gotta get going.